So good morning students and welcome to today's computer class. We'll start off from where we had left off yesterday and I explained to you the entire working of the computer system yesterday. If you would recollect, I explained to you how the input devices I used to transfer data into the central processing unit. Once the data is processed, then it is transferred to the output devices. I also gave you a detailed explanation as to how the CPU functions and what are the different functions that are performed by it in the form of arithmetical logical unit, in the form of a control unit or in the form of the primary memory which we spoke about that is the ROM and the RAM. We will go into detail a little more when we come to that part or that section that is about the memory devices. Now what I want you students to do is since this is a revision <coughs> And all of you may have already studied about this. All of you may have already studied about the different types of input devices, output devices and storage units in class five. So along with that portion also, I would like to elaborate a little more and explain to you in detail while sharing the screen about the different types of devices. So while you open your class 5 book, I also want all of you to have a 6 class book with you because all these devices, whichever I'm going to explain the input devices we'll be touching on today, all these devices in particular, some may have been taught to you and some may be a little new but you may need to know a little about them. So all of you get your books, that is your class five book also. And along with that also bring your class six book. And as the lecture goes on, please go through the book and read the definitions. Okay. You can explain, get all the explanations in the book. I'm explaining it to you. At the same time, there are explanations of those particular devices given to you in your book. So while the lecture goes on, you can also read through those particular topics or those particular devices and get more information about that particular unit or device. Okay, so without wasting much time, I'll now start sharing my screen like I did yesterday because it makes better sense when I share the screen. And so I'm sharing my screen here with you. And now on your screen, this was yesterday where we had left off. If you recollect, this was the chart of the computer block diagram which we had taken and <clears throat> right and after that we had come to the overview of the cpu which i had also explained to you in detail this was the overview of your cpu or the central processing unit where i showed you about the cache alu control unit main memory backing auxiliary memory and input output devices how the data is transferred and how the controls are transferred. So this yesterday we had studied up to. Now we go a little further. <clears throat> and today the first input device, your keyboard on your screen. Now to make it a little easy, I've tried to categorize them according to the colors. So if you can see over here, character keys. These in blue are your character keys. They may be special characters or they may be even alphabetic characters. 
So these are called character keys. Then you have in the yellow color, the enter and editing key. Now this key is your backspace key and this is your enter key. Along with that, we also have a key for inserting and deleting. And over here, there is another enter key. So enter keys, depending on your keyboard, you may have the enter key in a different position, but this is basically relevant to all keyboards and laptops. Then we have navigation keys. Navigation keys are for moving the control of the cursor. Now these are the forward, backward, left and right arrow keys accordingly. Then you have your home key, you have your page up key for scrolling a full page up. Then you have the page down key and the end key. So these are your navigational keys in green color. In purple over here, you can see the numeric keypad. <clears throat> this is your numeric keypad. Out of these two keys, the num lock key and the enter key are not considered on the numeric keypad. It is basically these numbers. What happens students, sometimes when you have to enter data in a numeric form, then it is more convenient for you to have this numeric keypad activated. And this numeric keypad is activated by pressing the num lock on. As soon as you press this on, your, this particular section will start functioning. That is the numeric. When this num lock key is off, then these arrows and these other keys, that is the home, end, page up, page down, insert and delete these keys will be functional. So these are double utility keys. It is only when the num lock is activated and you can see over here, I'll make it a little bigger just in case. <clears throat> okay. So here you can see the num lock. This has got a light over here. As soon as this num lock is pressed, this num lock light burns and these numeric keys get activated. Similarly, you have the caps lock light and you have a scroll lock light. Whenever your caps lock, caps is for typing in capitals, alphabets in capitals. Advised by default, it comes in small. So if you want them to be pressed, and you want to type them in capital letters, then in that case, you will have to keep your caps lock on. And this light over here will indicate whether your caps lock is on or your caps lock is off. And then you have the scroll lock key, which again, you can activate from here. You have the scroll lock and here you activate, it will come on. So this was about the numeric keypad. Then you have modifier keys. Now as you can see over here, this is called your shift key. This types whichever letters over here are in the upper case. So you can see double case, that is you have an ampersand sign here and you have seven. You have an exponential sign here and you have six. You have a percentage sign and you have five. You have a dollar sign and four. So if you want, <coughs> excuse me, if you want to type the uppercase characters, then you have to keep this key pressed. This is called as your shift key. This is used to type in uppercase wherever there are double case letters, even here. It is functional wherever you will find these double case letters. So this is a modifier key. Then you have the control and the alt key also. 
Similarly, here you have on this side also you have the shift key, you have the control key, and you have the alt key. So these are modifier keys because they can be used as shortcuts. You will see later on in different types of softwares, wherever you work, whether you work in a programming language or you work in an application package such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Access, these keys, that is the control and the alt key, are used along with a special character key or even an alphabet key to create any type of a shortcut. And they have a separate function which you can use. All right. For example, control X for cut. Okay. Control V for paste. Okay. So these are and control C for copy. These are shortcut keys which the control key, if I use X in Word, it will cut that particular line or word from there. It will delete it. So that is what I mean by modifier keys. It is used to modify the contents of any particular document. Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint, Access database, or even sometimes it is used in different programming languages. Then you have the system and the GUI keys. These are the system keys. Many of you will see over here. One is the escape key. One is the print screen key. One is the pause break key. And over here also, many of you will have the window sign. You will have the sign of the window over there. So that means that these keys are directly related to the system. That's why they are known as system or graphical user interface keys. Now these keys directly act. Suppose if you want to print something from the screen, you use the print screen. Or you want to stop your program temporarily, you use the control pause break. Along with the control key sometimes or sometimes by itself, depending on the software you are working in. Right? Here you have a Windows key. It is not displayed in this particular section, but you have the symbol of Windows. So you press that directly, you will be able to go to your Windows desktop. Or you may even have, be able to exit out of Windows. Or you may even be able to restart your Windows. Okay. So these keys, which are in a little orange color, they are known as the system or the GUI keys. Then students, you have the function keys. These are the functional keys or the function keys which are present on top, F1 to F12. F1 to F12 keys, these are different functional keys and whenever you do any different type of programming language or application package, particularly in programming languages, these functional keys are used to perform different commands. Okay, let run a file, exit a file, save a file, compile a file. So this you will see when you learn programming, whether we learn QBasic or we speak of Python or any type of programming language, then you will see the use of these particular functional keys. And last of all, you have the lock keys. Like I told you, num lock means it activates the numbers. It locks this keypad up and only allows numbers to be entered. As soon as this key is put on, I told you, this will get activated. So this is a lock key. Scroll lock. This is another key. And here you have caps lock. Like I told you, these are lock keys as you are given over here on top. The three lock keys, the num lock key, the caps lock key, and the scroll lock key. So this was a little closer look if you want to have. That is all I can. <clears throat> so this is your keyboard. Please take a look.
and if you have any doubts please mark these down whenever you are studying in your book these are not explained so elaborately in the book neither in the fifth class book and neither has it been explained in the sixth class book either there are just small small little definitions i have diversified and elaborated on this particular keyboard so that you know the working of the different keys okay the next screen again is that of a keyboard and like i told you you can see over here escape key functional key typewriter keys other keys numeric keypad enter key alt key yes this is the space bar key used for giving a space all of you whenever you type an alphabet or a word and need to leave a space in between or even numbers then you use the space bar key and the windows key which i was speaking about these are the windows keys and the alt and the control key so i won't waste much time since i have already explained in detail about the computer keyboard in the previous slide <clears throat> now i come to the second device input device that is the mouse now over here students you can see mechanical and optical mice now this is an example of a mechanical the conventional mouse which we would call it which was previously used why because it had a roller ball over here and it was more mechanical in nature it never had an ic circuit and if it did have one it was not elaborate enough it wasn't you know advanced enough to accept different types of commands and this is an example of your optical mouse so here you can see your optical mouse which is used with the help of a light led light which you call it this is a led light so if you have in your homes most of you will be having this type of a mouse at the moment which has an led light underneath right this mouse may be used on batteries with the help of a dongle or it also can be connected with the help of a usb wire the option which type of mouse you are using that is yours now let us come to this a little and understand the mouse also and the working of the mouse it was important for me to show you this because generally what is given about the mouse is only it has the left click it has the scroll wheel and it has the right click now the left click is used for selecting right click is used for generally drop downs that is cut copy paste etc and the scroll wheel is for scrolling up and down that is all fine but how does this work <clears throat> how does this mouse work that is important for us to understand a little bit so coming over here you can see this we are talking about is your cable and this is your usb connector this is attached into your cpu or your laptop or wherever you have a usb port here is the right click switch and here is the left click switch now these two switches which you have the left click and the right click when it is reversed this area will come this side and this area will go this side so it's that's why don't when you reverse the mouse the area the sides will change so under the left click there is a switch and under the right click there is also a switch then we have a scroll wheel this scroll wheel is attached to over here a red color thing which is called as a encoder this encoder is for the scroll wheel over here the scroll wheel is attached to an encoder also at the side over here you have another wheel 
that is called as the roller to roll the mouse forward or backward and this roller rolls the mouse to the left or the right you can see side to side roller this roller is used to roll the mouse sideways this roller is used to roll the mouse forward and these two rollers are attached to a shaft and this shaft is then attached to this ball this ball is visible if you ever see a conventional mouse you will see that this ball is visible underneath so as this ball rotates those impulses are transferred to this particular area that is the shaft this then sends it forward to the roller and the roller which is attached to the red color encoders there is an encoder here there is an encoder here and there is an encoder here so these impulses are then transferred into electronic whatever frequencies and those are then converted and the computer understands that a command is being sent to it to move the cursor now all those commands how they work and what they work is all built within the operating system whenever you install a mouse driver all these commands are specially with the operating system or the os the os has all the drivers built in to accept the different types of functionality commands or impulses so this was about the conventional mouse the other mouse which most of you are using nowadays this is a little different it does not have this ball in between this ball is not present there instead it has this led light you can see over here this is a led light and this led light then transfers whatever movement through this surface to the camera there is a camera over here this is a camera a small little camera a very simple one not a very sophisticated one but then this camera captures this light transmission only meant for transferring light and capturing the transmission of light and then there is a prism here you can see this prism there is underneath this is a prism and this then transfers it onto this circuit this is a circuit board green color one is a circuit board on this circuit board you have the different types of you can see over here circuit board this also has a circuit board but it is not so high tech it is a very simple circuit board with maybe a few diodes and maybe one odd resistance but here you will find on the ic circuit board you will have transistors also fitted so those transistors then try are able to transmit this particular electronic impulse convert it and then transmit it to the computer system so as you move as you move your mouse this particular surface over here you will find that this led light captures the movement transfers it to the camera the camera then encodes it and through the prism it transfers it on to this particular circuit board which then send the pulses to in the form of a usb or it can be also connected with the help of a dongle that is a cordless mouse which we talk about it can be transferred to the computer and the movement of the cursor is reflected and here at the bottom this is your signal antenna you can see your signal antenna and you have batteries which are placed over here they are rechargeable batteries which you generally can place it in some of the mouse you will find the rechargeable battery over here so with every new improvement 
every new change, you have many changes coming by. Of course, you need not worry about that. So now, <clears throat> so this is another example. I'm just trying to show you the inner circuit, what I spoke about, the resistors or the diodes, the LED, which is here. You can see it very clearly hidden here. These are the capacitators. All these are capacitators. Then here is the sensor of the mouse motion. This is the sensor, students. You can see this. These are all connected to this motherboard, the small little IC board. These, this is a sensor, this black color one. This is your scroll wheel. You can see the scroll wheel. And of course, your right and left click buttons, which are present over here. And from here, if you are using a USB mouse, this wire may be the ear or ear, don't get confused. This is the external cord going for the USB. The other wires out. So just to give you a better example of what it does look. So this is a simple mouse. It doesn't have much complicated IC circuits on it, but still it has enough to transmit and convert the different impulses and transfer it to the computer system so as to help for the movement of that particular device in that direction. Okay. Now we come to the next device. Now these devices, please students, I told you, please try and understand, they may not be in order of your fifth class book. Maybe some of them I have picked up because you need to know sooner or later about these devices. So maybe you have studied about these in class five. We are yes doing a revision of the class five section. But then, like I told you, when we go further, we need to increase our knowledge. And for that reason, I'm trying to explain to you a little more in detail and I'm maybe taking a few more devices, which may not have been taught to you in class five, but they will be there in your portion in class six. So I'm not going beyond the portion of class six either. I'm just trying to keep within the limits of your class six portion. But at the same time, I'm also increasing your knowledge a little and trying to explain in detail. So please keep both your books open when you are going through this chapter. It becomes a little easy for you to understand. Okay. So coming to this particular device, which you see on the screen, this is your joystick. Now this joystick generally is taken from the aeroplanes. It is based or built on the pattern of a flight stimulator. And from there, it got improvised and it got more also used for gaming purposes in computing. So here is your precision twist rudder control. This is your rudder control or your trigger as you may call it. This is your trigger. I'll show you a next one in that you'll be able to understand it also better. Then this is a eight way hot switch over here. This is a hot switch, which we call, this is your handle grip. And here you have your stable base while you have some programmable buttons at the side. So more or less when you buy a joystick, you buy it for gaming purposes. It is not used for writing programs or anything. It is more used for gaming and playing games, especially games which have controls where you need to have animation effects. So my next slide will depict it a little better. All right. 
Now here you can see control head rotation. Now this is your control head rotation, the center switch. These are controls for rotation. Then this is your reset. This part. That is you want to reset the head position and the orientation. Then whatever head means not the head of a human. It means whatever head, whatever your device or console you are using to play that game. Suppose you are interacting of a plane or you are interacting, let us say, a battlefield scene of a particular warrior. Then this head position means controlling that particular warrior. That particular, what you should say, uh, this console is working for that particular uh, screen and on that particular screen it is functioning. Then you have the head zoom in and out. Here is your head zoom in and out. Here you have your trigger to shoot. This part is like a gun. It has a trigger. You press it over here and this will fire. If you are playing a shooting game, then this is a trigger which you generally use. And then you have to control your pitch and roll of a craft. This is a grip over here which you put and there is a switch over here. You can control your craft movement whichever direction you want it to. This can be rotated. This whole part can be rotated around this base. And here is your weapon switch buttons, which you have configured. You can configure accordingly onto every button, whatever types of weapons and things within your game. Every game has its own specifications. So you need to know, and you will know it better than anybody else, even maybe better than me, because most of you are very, very comfortable with all these. So I need not explain to you as to what you need to do. I'm just showing you how the joystick works. This is another type of a joystick which was used previously. This is also a type of a joystick. We call it a joystick and it is very simple. You have the D-pad over here. Okay. And then this is your touch screen here. You have your pause options. You have your share button. And this is your PlayStation headphone jack over here somewhere and the right analog and the left analog. These are the two analog buttons which you generally have for cursor movements, etc. So many of you may have used even this type of a joystick. However, nowadays these are not much used. Most of them go for the other type which I showed you previously. Light pen. The next type of input device which we speak of is the light pen. Uh, students, this light pen is basically used <coughs> and it can detect the presence of light. Light pens are used for healthcare professionals such as doctors and dentists and design work. So if you are doing fashion designing or graphic designing or creating on a graphic pad, we will come to a graphic pad. So this device generally works well with a graphic tablet or a graphic pad for writing. It is connected and as you all know this has a sensor over here and this sensor transmits and has a whole lot of converters here which then transmit the pulses to the computer. So this it says a computer input device in the form of a light sensitive wand used in conjunction with the computer. That means this device by itself cannot function. It is only useful when it detects and is configured with that particular device, specifically with graphic tablets, right? And touch screens. And you have to have the proper software you just can't buy a light pen and use it. You have to have the software installed. You have to have 
that particular configuration, preferably a touch screen, so as to use this particular device. You just can't buy a light pen and use it on any and every device. It may be basic functions it may give you, but if you want to do any type of drawing, etc., it may not be much useful. Now, along with this, I would like to show you also another type of pen. Since this pen is also an input device and it is called as a premium pen. Now this you may be looking at, this is not a ball pen. This is also a light pen. This may look to you as a ball pen, it is a light pen. And in this type of light pens, which are a little high sensitive pens used, you have over here, I'll just show you since I said I was teaching you about a light pen. You need to know even that you have these type of premium light pens also. The premium pen, it has a camera as you can see over here. This is a hidden mic underneath here, right? This is a memory card. This memory card is inserted here. This is a switch which you have over here. You can see this card inserted and the USB charging port. You insert this part into the charging USB into your device, into your computer or your laptop. Only this part is pulled out and from here this much unit as you can see is used to charge like a pen drive. It generally looks. Here on top is your on and off button. You can see over here, you have an on off button. And here is the HD camera recording lens. You have over here very specifically, you won't even be able to make out. It has a HD camera as well as an audio over here, somewhere here. Okay. And this is a metal body tube. So this can also be used as a light pen. Provided, like I said, you have the proper software installed or you have the proper device in the form of a touch screen, which is sensitive to this particular device and configured. I use the word configured means it has to be able to accept. Both have to be able to accept each other and they should be able to accept the commands which are given so as to make them compatible. So this device needs to be configured with your system, whichever system you are working and it can also be carried without the system. Sometimes if you want to do a recording or sometimes you want to do any type of uh, videography or any type of shooting, then you can use this also. It is a very high sensitive camera which kept in your pocket and you switch it on, you won't even know that you are recording. So you have to be a little careful whenever you are using these type of devices. But still, nevertheless, I needed to show it to you because you need to know when you're speaking of a light pen, this also is a category of a light pen because this part is used for working on the computer. This is light sensitive. This is not a ball pen. It is not meant for writing on paper. It is meant for working on electronic device. Now you can see over here, your next device is your graphic tablet. This is your graphic tablet, which I was speaking about. These are only meant basically for drawing or making different types of interior designing or fashion designing or doctor's prescription or even sometimes for writing and signing different type of electronic documents. You can see over here this electronic document has been signed using this light pen. This is a light pen. You can see it over here. And this light pen is generally connected and used with graphic tablets. So graphic tablets 
you can use also your finger some of them are screen sensitive but more than often it is a light pen which is used with a graphic tablet so this is a light pen this has a wire that is a cable which is attached to this particular device this is another type of a light pen this is a tablet connected to your computer or even to your television and while you draw over here whatever imprint or whatever you want you can get these softwares are installed here they are installed in this system also both these are compatible with each other and you can either work stand alone or you can even connect this to a bigger screen and while you draw here the same impulse or the same drawing can be shown over here so that's how you use it you can use it with a computer the smart tv or you can use it with any other type of bigger display unit which is compatible compatible means understands the same instructions as given to this and is able to accept the same type of software right you can see here a proper drawing being made on a graphic tablet and this is a light pen this is the software you can draw and you can save it or whatever you wish to do you can even erase it if you don't feel it appropriate you know next device is the scanner <coughs> Now scanner students are of different types. You get the all-in-one scanner, you get the flatbed scanner, you get the drum scanner, and you have the handheld scanner. So it depends which type of scanner you want to use. Now don't confuse this with a barcode reader. This is not a barcode reader. This is a scanner. it looks like a barcode reader but the job of a scanner is a little different than a barcode reader it can read instructions other than barcodes it can scan details other than barcodes barcodes can only scan lines i'll come to that so here is the all in one scanner you put whatever document over here put it down it is like a photo machine and you will get the print out here so you may say as to why this is not a photocopy no because this is connected to the computer and from the computer you can transfer the data you can take the impulses you can take the input you can send the output from this particular device wherever you wish to then you have the drum scanner and you have a flat bed scanner now what happens is in a photocopy machine you get only a hard copy if you put a book or a picture graph you will get only a print out of that this content which you have scanned this can also be saved with the help of a scan unlike a photocopy machine you cannot save this content suppose i have a book and i want certain chapters of that book to be photocopy so i will get a print out of that but i cannot save the contents for my further viewing on the computer so if i want not only to have a print out of that particular chapter or pages or photograph but i also want that along with that this particular whatever i have scanned the document it should also be saved as a digital input into my computer then in that case we need to use a scanner and not a photocopy machine so that is the basic difference between a scanner and a photocopy machine a scanner is able to electronically or digitally encode and save your information whether it be a word document or it be a jpe image or it be a pdf file whatever you wish to 
it will be saved electronically into your computer hard disk or wherever you wish to transfer that particular data into. Now here I'll increase the size and I'll show you exactly. You can see over here that this is the document. This is your touch screen tab. It has a whole lot of buttons over here with the software. Now he is scanning this photocopy over here. You can see it. And at the same time, if he wants to transfer a digital copy into another electronic device, maybe a laptop or a PC, then he can transfer this image also along with taking a printout. So that is the difference when you use a scanner and you use an ordinary photocopy machine. So this is an example of a scanner, which is your all-in-one scanner generally. We use all-in-one scanners most of the time. This is a flatbed scanner, which is available. You put your picture here and you scan this image. If this is connected to your printer, it will give you a hard copy or else if you want, you can take this copy, you can put it into your particular computer or laptop or pen drive, wherever you want to save it. This is a handheld scanner, which you may have seen many a time, security people use it. Now this is a scanner also. If you see over here, this has a backup over here like a UPS it is, somewhere it is placed around, okay. This is the sound hole. You may not see this device. Otherwise, most of the time it is built in over here. You can see it over here. This panel is built in here or it may be as a separate device also. In the older ones, this panel was not built in here. It was like a box like a CPU which was provided to you separately. But nowadays, this panel is built in here. You can see the red light, the yellow light, and the green power. So as he moves this particular surface, you can see here, this is your detection pane. If you have any type of metallic object or anything when you are going into a mall or a cinema talkie or anywhere where you're supposed not to carry a particular type of object or device, this particular detention pane will send out a pulse and a beep. And that person, the security guard, whoever is scanning, will know at once and ask you to reveal whatever you have in your pocket or maybe in your bag. So this is a type of a scanner with a different purpose. This is not meant for taking any type of documents. It is meant only for scanning devices or it is meant for scanning any type of metallic objects, anything other than maybe your car keys, any type of weaponry, any type of objects which could cause any type of harm, then this type of scanner is used for security purposes. The next device is the MICR, Magnetic Ink Character Recognizer. Now this may be of different forms. It may appearance may differ in different places, but this is one of the latest ones. You can see over here a check of a particular bank. This check is put into the slot and it goes around and it comes out detecting the ink on this particular check. I'll show you the check and I'll show you where the ink is also. But this device basically what it does is it scans that particular check. More often it is used in banks. That's why I'm speaking about a check. Magnetic ink character recognizer or magnetic ink character reader, one and the same thing. This is a device to find out the authenticity of a particular check, that the check is not forged. 
It is also used sometimes to detect the authenticity of rupee notes. It has a special ink in it, and that ink is detected by these high-end magnetic ink character readers. The particular check or note is put here, and it goes around, and it has a proper sensor over here, which once it detects, if it is okay, it will tell you a light will burn somewhere around here, and then otherwise it will show you an error over here in one of these displays which are on top. There's a green light and there's a red light over here somewhere. So it will sense it and it will accordingly tell you depending on what type of check or what type of note or what type of currency you are putting in and verify. So this is basically to catch forgeries which happen to detect the forgeries, especially when it comes to checks and banking notes. So another type of a scanner, this is another model. You can have different models. You can see over here the check. This is the check which is slid in and from here it will take out accordingly. If the check is correct, it will accept it and give you a printout. Otherwise it will return the check back and a light will blink over here. You may have different lights and indicators anywhere that may show you whether the check is forged, incorrect. But this works. The very fact that it detects, it, it detects a special type of ink. So I'm coming to that. And for that, I'm showing you this particular check. So you need to know over here that when on a check, all of you may have seen this, this is the RTGS NIFT IFC. Every bank has a IFSC code. Okay, that is unique, the IFSC code. And over here, this digit is the MICR code, the center one. This first one is called your check number. This is your check number. And this is your MICR code. So the MICR reader will read this particular code and ink. Not only will it read the code, it will also detect the ink. A typical ink or a special ink is used for every bank. And only once this is authentic, will it accept. So this particular MICR code is detected by the MICR reader and if the check or the note has the authentic ink and has the authentic code then it will accept it otherwise it will reject this particular check. So once again the first one is always called your check number. This is also I'm sharing a little information a general little information with all of you. I know all of you may be knowing but still, this is your check number here. This is your MICR code. So next time you see a check, you know exactly where is the MICR code. And on top, of course, this is got nothing to do, but this is used for different types of transactions, whether you're doing an RTGS or you're doing a NIFT or you're doing an IMPS. And it has also the IFSC code, which is unique to each bank and each branch. Each bank and branch is verified not by its address but by its IFSC code throughout India and of course you write over here what details you have to write to whom the amount in words in figures and you need to sign it over here that is it so this is an example of a check this is the account number of that particular saving bank account or whatever account that person has this is his account number which is printed over here so this is an example it may vary different banks have different types of formats the format may vary but remember one thing the micr code will always be over here and every bank has its own specific micr code and ink which needs to be detected so that is the use of an MICR reader. 
Then we come to the barcode reader. This is what I was speaking about. People generally confuse it with the scanner. Now scanner students, scanner is a little different in the sense that scanner can understand different types of text, different types of pictures and can encode it. A barcode reader will only read these bars. You can see over here, this red color light is being beamed from here. And this particular code depicts the origin of the product, the price of the product, the day of packing of the product. Okay. So many details are within this bar. So each product, whenever you buy any product, whether you buy clothes or you buy shoes, or even if you buy any type of grocery items, you'll see that this type of lines over there with a unique number is given. And this barcode will depict which date the product was manufactured, expiry date, more importantly, the price of the product and the place of origin of the product. And all this, as soon as this barcode reader is moved over this, this data is already fed into the computer and it correlates with this code and gives you the price or whatever billing etc needs to be completed. So as soon as you go to buy a product many a time you'll see a person takes out this and just reads this barcode. So barcodes are nothing but lines of different size and different widths. Every product will have a different barcode and a different number depending on its origin, on its product, its price, on its date of manufacturing, on its date of expiry and whatever other formalities a particular product needs to fulfill. There are different types of barcoders here. You can have an example of the different, the handheld, the fixed mount and the mobile barcoders. Don't confuse this with a mobile phone. This is a barcoder. I'm just displaying to you the different types that you could have. Most importantly used is this type, but you can also use, you may find sometimes these type of barcoders also present. Then we have what is the QR code. What is a QR code? Now students, many of us are used to doing Paytm etc. And we find this QR code over there displayed. This QR code is unique. This combination of pattern is unique. So whenever a shopkeeper displays this QR code, he has a unique pattern which has been provided to him. And when you scan this, now this is not a device. <coughs> this is not a device, please. This is only a code. And this code is interpreted and read. And once this is interpreted and read, then this data is transferred. And accordingly, the payments are made. So just for your information to break it up a little, again, I repeat, this is not a device. It is a code. But this code has to have a software you generally use Paytm, most of you are using Paytm, etc. or PayPal, etc. And you scan this code. Many of you are used to doing that. With the help of your device, it can be a mobile, which you are using more than often. All of you have a mobile. Some can even use a different type of device, which as long as it has the software and it has a proper camera. So you scan this and this barcode is encoded. And then accordingly, this barcode is linked to a particular bank account where the money is transferred. So whenever 
a shopkeeper displays this barcode this barcode is unique and it is given to him and linked with his particular bank account so as soon as you scan this in your device and type the amount that amount is directly transferred while reading this pattern into his bank account so this is the finder pattern in red color this is the format information i won't go much into detail about this but i just need to display to you what it is this black color is the data this is your timing pattern this in blue color then you have your alignment pattern or the version this you will see three big boxes and one small box for every barcode is qr code sorry you will find you will have three big boxes and one small box and what will be unique is this display of pattern that is this is the data black one the white one is blank the black one is the pattern this is the data then you have the version over here whatever version information it is and you have a quiet zone here in this area this is the quiet zone this is the quiet zone and the version of the qr code this is along this in the center there'll be a strip which gives you the version of this particular qr code so the that is all for now and another example of the qr code and i think today's class i will end here the remaining input devices which are left we will see and study them in our next class whenever we have it in the coming week and then we move on to memory devices etc the qr code again this is your dead space as we would call it okay this is your positioning markers like you had in the previous one one in the same thing here the finder pattern you calling it here in the next one it is called as your positioning markers this is your version information displayed over here on top of this box you will always have the version information then this is your alignment marker and it says let's the reader i'll increase the size a little let's the reader access the code viewed on an angle so at a particular angle only will this be available to you to be scanned okay and here is your timing code and as you can see information that is the data is in the black and white checkered man so this is just the basics i wanted to share with you i know many of you are doing paytm many of you are using paytm and you may have used this type of a qr code or seen a qr code nowadays displayed at every shop outside because most of you are using your mobile and are doing net banking or using a device to pay your money which is connected to your bank account nobody carries cash and if they do carry very few carry so many of you are familiar with it so i need not go much into detail i just wanted to share this information with you so that is all for today's class students i hope whatever i shared with you was a little information informative and i hope all of you understood the different types of input devices along with their uses and their functions in the next class like i said we will move further and see a little more about some input devices which are left as well as we will talk about memory devices and output devices So that's all for now take care and stay safe so that's all 
Have a nice day.